I'm Marie. I'm the team lead for the support team here at Userlane. So uh, my main responsibility is to look into technical issues that clients might be facing when handling our product. And I came to teaching in a bit of a weird way because already when I was a little kid, I was always amazed by different cultures and different countries. And I always wanted to study something about intercultural um, studies. So I did that and then later on I worked for a university and someone got sick and I was asked, hey, do you want to do a training this weekend for, for our master program students? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And this is the very first time that I actually hold a lecture. And after that, they were so impressed and so amazed by me actually being able to do things like that. So for the past five years, I've been teaching courses on intercultural behavior, cross-cultural management or communication at that very university. And I really do enjoy that meeting students from all over the world in that courses. For me, what I really understood was that you always have to start with yourself first. Once you understand better what your values are on what your cultural background actually is, the better it is to really go out there and ask questions about others and about their behaviors, about their values, and really see things from a different perspective. And I find it highly interesting. And at the same time, every now and then, I still see how many things can actually go wrong, even despite me knowing all those things, because we were raised in a certain way. We were raised in a certain society and it's hard, but it's something that is really special as well when you meet and work with people from all over the world. One of the pitfalls, I believe, is that you're thinking, oh, I've read about that culture. So everyone from that culture must be like that. And that's not true because that person you might be talking to might have been raised in a very different way, might not have the, relig the religion you, you'd expect them to have or would perhaps even have other values. So you might just assume, you know, and you should never assume in any context. It's better to just bring it up and ask and clarify and really be curious about that other person. I take that learning in by really being more aware of not only paying attention to what is being said, but also what kind of ver like verbal cues, of course, I'm seeing aren't hearing, but also the visual cues that I'm seeing and noticing. So really, even now in virtual settings like this, people behave slightly different and people might feel better about, for example, scheduling long meetings and other people from other cultures might be more into shorter meetings, more efficient meetings. And by even having that realization that people might have different preferences, not only from the personal preference point of view, but also based on what is common in their culture or in their environment, they might also still be living in because people are at different places right now. That's good to know, to still be aware of those differences and bringing those up and also being aware that by, for example, having some people of a company at one place and few of them at different places, you still make sure that everyone feels included and you still bring those things up to foster a good team spirit. And that's internally very important, but then also when you're working with clients, it's really important to figure out who they actually are and what would be important for them, how they want to have meetings. So also for them, it's, it's good to bring that up. What do you need? What do you prefer? And then adjust to it. I'm in the right position that I can adjust if I know about it. And there might be other things where I'm like, okay, but from my end, I need this. So I'm more vocal about that as well at the same time. And that helps a lot. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for having had that learning. <laughs> right, I mean, we've definitely seen in the past two years, many companies and organizations were not ready for it yet. They, they, they didn't know how to handle having people like all work remotely having to think about that. And then that was already a challenge in itself, 
how do we even set up their workspaces? How, how do we create a good environment there? So thinking about cultures was not necessarily a top priority for most companies yet. So even like when it comes to having books on that topic, there are not that many yet. So we only slowly but steadily start seeing more books around virtual cross-cultural teams. We start seeing um, some books on even sharing best practices and toolkits. And I truly hope that we're going to see more about that in the f future so that leaderships can get trained on this, that they get the awareness that this is really important. You really need to think about how to even set up your teams. Do you really want a team that is all over the world? Or do you want to go for an option where perhaps part of the team is in one place and the others are somewhere else? But it all comes with advantages and disadvantages. And you have to be really carefully thinking about it. And then, as you would do if we, everything was still in person, think about how to have team building activities around it, how to make sure people can share where they come from and what their reality is like these days and even with restrictions and things like that. So I believe the next couple of years will show how we can handle that more efficiently and more inclusively and also in a more fun way. So people don't suffer from Zoom fatigue or are getting burned out, but they really enjoy going to work and meeting people from all over the world. And sure, we will also have to figure out other things such as how do we schedule even meetings when we have people in different time zones? What kind of language do we want to agree on? What do we do when um, the technical infrastructure is not given and all those things combined? So I think the next five years will be challenging, but also really interesting. And I hope that businesses will be at the front, basically, and leading the change that needs to come, that also needs to come into our educational systems all over the world, basically.